Welcome back to God's Golden Acres. I'm Kim. And I introduced her to the farm oh, several months ago. It was kind of cold then, too. And introducing a new barn cat to your farm can be a really big deal, especially if you go through a barn cat rescue so they're not as tame as most cats. So barn cat rescues are awesome. Typically, you're going to get decent mousers from them, but you have to know how to introduce them. They are going to need a place to stay, and there are many options. So you have, like our group, uh, little garden shed here. They know their food's in here, so they're gonna run in. Not time to eat. Oh, your kiddos just threw their bicycles in here. We have their food in this old freezer right here to keep mice out of it. It works really well. We feed the cats in here all the time. And the only thing here is, one of these windows over here doesn't have any glass in it, so the cats go in and out, which works for us right now. And you could also leave a window open for a cat if you want to do it here. It's not heated in here anyway, although there is a chimney. We could if we wanted to. If we fix that window, this would be an okay place for a more tame barn cat that wouldn't necessarily dash out the door while they were getting used to you feeding them. Depending on how friendly the cat is, Minimum two weeks. Most rescues recommend a month to six weeks. So if you're dealing with a barn cat rescue, which once again, these are more feral cats that are not friendly, you may not want this open of an area or you may not want a single door. So what we did with Miss, we go between calling her Hart and Harriet because I believe in having short names for animals so they can easily learn their name. But let's go over here and I'll show you where we kept her. So we're inside my husband's shop. It's quite a bit messier right now because we've got like a cooler we're working on for strawberries and then like tools over here. But in the shop we have a one heated room which worked great with moving her in a cooler time of year. So this used to be, I believe, a woodworking shop, but this gave us the hatch option to have two doors, which this room has just become storage also <laughs> because he's organizing somehow. I don't know, but it does have one heater over here. And so we had this place kind of cleaned up. There was still stuff in here if she got into it. It's not a big deal. You know, if you want to lay on bolts, go ahead. But the kids' karaoke machine is not in here. And that was one that we found on property out here or somewhere that was left by the previous owners. I don't know. But we kept her in this room. And obviously we had like a litter box, water, food. And then we, the perks of having kind of stuff in here was that she had a lot of places to hide and she could really like hunker down from us when we were coming in the first week or so before she was ready for us to pet her. And then when she got out, which she did a couple times, she was in this room and that worked great. Now this isn't a home base for her necessarily. They don't come in here anymore and that's not necessarily the best because typically you do want them in a place where they can get easily. Thankfully we don't live near a road so we were dealing with maybe predators in the woods out here, out back, but that's something you're gonna deal with barn cats anyway. So we weren't worried about her like running into the road or getting too freaked out when she went back outside. And she did for us about two weeks because we got her, she was a cat that liked like one person and they were moving because they were elderly and they couldn't keep her and take her with. And there are definitely gonna be some of you that don't even have those two options. And a barn is all you have. And it is definitely possible to introduce a cat to your property when you just have a barn. Now, I wouldn't suggest this when it's really hot or really cold. But you'll need a kennel that they can't get out of. And preferably one with a decent amount of space. This option works great because if you were to say put it in the loft here that easily becomes their space that they're very comfortable in you know and you can have straw up there and it can be fairly warm in the winter but 
you'll need a kennel that they can't get out of, one with a decent amount of space so you can have litter box and a food spot and a bed spot. And yeah, if you're introducing a cat that you definitely want to stay on property, you're going to have to clean litter for at least a month. Because even once there you let them out, if you can do it in a two-week period, you're looking at probably them still coming back to that area and still using that litter box, especially while they're getting used to that. So at least a month, but probably more like three. I'd be prepared for cleaning out a litter box for three months. But it is definitely possible to do the kennel method in a barn. In some ways, this is the best option because the barn is definitely going to be the place you want them. Uh, the garden shed for us would work fine because that's where we keep our food, so we definitely want to keep the mice out of there. And, yeah, like, I you could do up there, especially if you have a very skittish animal that you're introducing. Um, and in a place where you maybe wanted to get the dog and the cats used to each other, you could do kind of a tight corner in here because that's pretty easy in like that corner back there to make fairly warm. Right, Mary. So this one came with the property. They actually brought her back. So they had huskies that never really got used to her. They had about an acre, one of those wireless fences that they ran. And so the dog and the cat never really interacted. The cat kind of stayed in the barn way off the porches and the dogs didn't have much freedom. Well, when they moved into an apartment, the dog and the cat did not get along. Like, she was going to get injured. So they brought her back the very next day. And I was like, hey, she was born here. Do you mind if we bring her back? And we're like, sure. Why not have a cat? She does give love nips. There's definitely a difference between love nips and a cat trying to eat you, but... If you're allergic, sometimes those love nips can really get you. My mom's allergic to cats. And so those little love nips actually get inflamed for her. Even though she loves cats too, though. <laughs> it's sad to be allergic to cats. Just like it'd be sad to be allergic to chocolate or cinnamon. Love those foods. Are you a happy kitty? Say I'm semi-happy. Say our next video, we're going to talk about the thing... That distresses her because we got a new puppy she's about been here about five days about 12 weeks old and the puppy likes to chase this the may cat and the may cat likes to get the puppy to chase her and then to be absolutely mean and swat at so i'll probably introduce the puppy on the next video i'm not shoving a camera in her face first thing you know let her Get used to us, trust us, train a little bit. Um, first thing I do is teach touch, and it's just a simple command that uh, an animal can do in high stress in, um, situations. It's also good to teach things like heel. You know, if you tell them to touch your fist and then you hold it down by your hip, they should learn heel a little bit easier. I tried that with the, uh, which granted she's a hunting breed, so they're a whole character of their own but and a little bit more stubborn and not as willing to work that's just not a breed that's willing to work and so and then we had a baby when she was like a year old so you know not even march we had a NICU baby two two months before she turned a year old so training kind of slacked off there that's also why we got liz so they would entertain each other and get them to be lazy <laughs> Oh, thanks for being with us. I hope your introduction of a new barn cat goes well. I will be praying for you. God bless.